the heart of God is loving. The heart of God is loving. Now, and, and, and in this world, that's all, that, that means a lot of things to a lot of people. But I want you to understand that, yes, there is a true loving God. In fact, as early as the Old Testament, we understand a loving God. But imagine this. Imagine this. If God were to write a letter to you, what do you think he'd say? You know, in talking to people, not necessarily me, but just reading and other people do, who do this kind of research find that most people believe God would write them a nasty gram. God would write them, I'm so disappointed in you. And I'm not going to say that God is not disappointed in me at some times. I am not going to say that. But it's a disappointment in that God says, yeah, man, come on, come back home. It is never an angry go to timeout. Now, see, this is what we have to understand is from the very beginning is God's love never changes, but God's justice stays the same. In other words, he cannot tolerate us continuing to live in sin. All right. But he loves us so much that he gives us Jesus to get out of that. In the Old Testament, in Isaiah, it says the God is an everlasting God. He is a God who is with us all things and loves us beyond everything. But let's think of this. How about you? Do you sometimes wonder if God really loves, he loves you? I'm betting there's at least somebody's watching this at some point who actually believes they're not lovable. I work with people when I taught school and I work with kids and young adults and even older adults who sometimes feel they don't think they're worthy to be even cared for by other people. So therefore, God wouldn't want that. Do you feel like, though, you know God's concerned? Because if you don't, you should. You see, God is really concerned about your good, about what he made us for. He made us for a purpose to worship and glorify him and be the body of Christ. The ultimate good God accomplished for each of us, us is making us like Jesus. Ultimately, that's what it is. How will God use your circumstances, even the baggage of, of your life, to make you more like Jesus. You see, because the people who preach to you and teach you that it's all rainbows and unicorns whenever you become a Christian, they're not being honest. In fact, I'm going to share with you from Romans 8, actually my favorite chapter in the book of Romans. And I'm going to start you at verse 28 and run to 30. Okay? And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You see, it's for those of us who love God. And he will use everything for good. Not everything is good. Then in verse 29, for God knew his people in advance. He chose them to become like his son. He chose us to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and, and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. In other words, we have to go to God through Jesus. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. In other words, you are good in God's eyes when you come to Jesus. And, and, and having given them right standing... He gave them his glory. You see, the ultimate good that God is leading us to is to making us more like Jesus. This, this sometimes gets so distorted and people go, well, everything's not good. Everything's not good. No, no, no. He will use all the struggles in our life, all the joys, all the celebrations, everything in our life for good when we turn it over to Jesus. Folks, God has a loving heart. But he has a just heart, too, meaning we must be forgiven. We must not be consumed with sin. We should be working toward our discipleship, focusing on Jesus, always being 
in an attitude of repentance. Folks, God loves you. Stop standing back. Don't waste another minute thinking God doesn't want you. Come home. You want to know? Send us a, an email. Join us on Sunday. Do the travel right along with us. See you next week for another Heart of God.